Welcome back to the RipeWave Audio community. My name is John, and for this video, we will take a look at the Lingdorf AV processors, in particular, the 8K capable MP60 2.1. Now, we'll also look at their other processor model, which is the MP40, that doesn't have 8K yet, but it is planned uh, for the future. When it's coming, has not been announced, but that MP40 was released in May of 2020. The MP60 being the newest model, the 2.1 variant, and I get confused about the 2.1 because I think that's two front channels with a subwoofer, but I think that's uh, the variation, the firmware or whatever. But that came out last February of this year with the 8K uh, embedded in it. So let's take a look. Now, before we get into this, I will say we have been doing this series of 8K capable AVRs and AV processors, and we had uh, covered uh, so far Yamaha, uh, Pioneer, Onkyo, Denon, Marantz, and now Lingdorf. Now we have a couple more to do past this video we're going to cover Macintosh. Now we're covering Macintosh after Lingdorf because we know their MX170 is based off the MP60 and their um, MX123 is based off of Marantz uh, products. And so being able to cover those first was a logical order and then cover um, the Macintosh Labs um, three models that they have and then finally, the one that we skipped, we should, we should have done it along with Pioneer and Onkyo, is Integra. And that will complete the currently available 8K products. Uh, but then we're going to do a summary, and we'll take a look at where the other brands are standing as well. But let's get into Lingdorf right now. So uh, we said we're going to start with the MP60, which is their only 8K capable model. This is a has 16 channels of processing. This is an expensive unit. This is just under $15,000 US. Uh, nice looking, uh, very uh, stylish design. You, one might think that Anthem probably stole some design cues from this, or who knows, they might have arrived at a similar design language in parallel. But who, who knows? It does look a little bit like Anthem. Uh, and you can see this, uh, you know, has got a nice display on, on the left, appears to be monochromatic, a couple of wheels on it. I don't see any uh, headphone jacks on the front or the rear. This MP62.1 appears to have ex slots for expansion. There's three bays there. No word if and when there'll be expansion modules for this. But it seems to be the intent to allow for additional channels, et cetera, with this, this uh, product. Uh, one signature clue that you see, if you just look at the back of a Lingdorf, and you see the red line around the power switch, that clues you in. Uh, I think they're the only company that's out there doing processors that has that switch. So when you look on the Macintosh one. 70 MX170, it has that same, so that clues you in that who actually made this product, uh, and it was Lingdorf. Uh, now, Lingdorf has their Steinway associated um, models as well, but they're not in theater processors, those are all two channel. Uh, so, this is 16 uh, channels of processing, nice clean back. We'll get into the IO count in a subsequent slide here. Now, the MP40. As I said earlier, this is only 4K unit, 12 channels of processing. That's a major difference here. What you'll do, what we'll point out again later on, is this still has 16 outputs, but keep in mind only 12 of them uh, can be active at a time, so you'll be switching around speakers uh, to different configurations there. I don't have an interior picture of either the MP40 or the MP60 or MP60 uh, 2.1. So we're showing a prior generation, the MP50 here. We're assuming that it would have similar um, layout 
uh, and characteristics. Who knows? They could have upgraded it uh, since since that that generation. But uh, that's what we have to go on. Uh, similar look to the MP60. Cosmetics are slightly different. You can see that in the center area of the front panel, there's only this uh, square rectangular uh, spot that's black uh, versus a, 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 a straight strip going from top to bottom on the MP60 2.1. And uh, we'll look at it here side by side and you can really see the difference uh, between the, the two front panels. So the 40 stands out with that center strip is only a, a rectangle at the top versus the other one goes from top to bottom. And uh, so very similar looking units. The MP60 has, of course, the expansion slots, which the MP40 doesn't. Uh, we'll wait and see when the MP40 is going to come out with their two point HDMI 2.1 uh, feature set. And uh, maybe the 2.1 on the MP60 actually stands for the HDMI 2.1. Uh, 2 maybe maybe that's uh, that would actually make good logical sense. So looking at the uh, channel and how they get uh, configured, I took an investigation of the manuals here. They both have the same setup type screens. Uh, we show one here. Uh, it comes default with a 7.1 configuration, and then you can determine how you want to lay this out. So I, I keep evolving the, the graphical display of how these channels are configured. Uh, the blue squares, rectangles, are the optional ones. Just keep in mind when you have the MP40, your total count can't be more than 12 active at a given time. Uh, with the MP60, you can have 16 channels active, including subwoofers. So, uh, But they're very flexible on the subwoofers. You can have up to five subwoofers configured, uh, and that's going on the aux... Uh, the, the auxiliary ports plus the, the standard uh, dot one for LFB. And with their subwoofers, they'll even allow a subwoofer for the front and left channels where it's, it's uh, even in a stereo mode that those LFBs would be picking up the bass for the front and left, uh, left and right speakers there. Uh, yeah, so they're very flexible, and, I, and one new thing I've done with the, the uh, infographic here is that Ring uh, is depicting height speakers, so they, they differentiate in the configuration between ceiling and height, and not all um, uh, processors, receivers make that distinction. They treat normally heights and, and, and ceiling the same, but here they're actually treating them differently, at least in the configuration. How they actually apply that acoustically, uh, I, I'm not certain. But when you end up with the MP40, you, you'll be able to do 7.1.4 configurations or, or 9.1.2 configurations or something in between with, say, you're configuring more subwoofers and less height channels. Uh, maybe you're not doing the front wide, so you'd end up with uh, a 7.3.2 or a 7.1.4 uh, for the for the speaker configurations. Obviously, the MP60 with the 16 channels of processing gives more flexible configurations. You know, 7.1.8 to 9.5.2. So if you're going to be subwoofer heavy, uh, you know, paying the extra five thousand dollars for the MP60, and I forgot to note before that the MP40 is uh, you know, about $5,000 less at $9,500. Uh, it's a big difference in price for those extra channels, but for some of you, that's it's worth it because you want that flexibility with, with your channels. And uh, yeah, so these models here, they, um, you know, don't have headphone jacks on either one of these. Uh, there is no built-in FM AM tuner there is um, uh, certainly a, a removable IEC power cord, which is good. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's, that's what we'll say about those connections there. And, uh, you know, as we, we come through this, and 
I wanted to show you a slide here that actually compares a little bit more the two screens of the configuration. And you can see that both of them physically have 16 outputs. So you really got to pay attention that the MP40 only has 12 channels of processing. And then if we look at this um, further here, you know, the, the uh, MP60 also is differentiated in the surround sound decoding that it supports. Yeah, no, they both have um, Dolby Atmos support, they both have DTSX support, and they both have Oral 3D support. And I know a lot of you love the op mixer for Oral 3D. The MP62.1 with its 16 channels of processing also supports DTSX Pro. Now, neither model is IMAX enhanced capable or has THX. And as we know, Onkyo is the only game in town that does THX. They do both support Dolby Vision, and for calibration, they use Lingdorf's own Room Perfect room calibration software, which is unique because what they try to do with their calibration is preserve the characteristics of the speaker while accounting for the acoustics of the room. And rather than just normalize everything to one sound characteristic, they're trying to preserve what characteristics your speakers have. You know, assuming if you're buying a Lingdorf, you have good quality speakers, and you bought those because of the way those speakers sounded, so why not preserve them? Uh, a very good concept uh, there. If we look in further here to the I.O. count, we will see there is some differences here particularly on HDMI. The MP40 is three in, one out, whereas the MP60 2.1 is five HDMI in and two out. Now, I find the MP40 is a little stingy. I would at least need five, and we see models from other vendors that go up to, to seven channels of inputs and even three outputs in some cases on the HDMI. So I uh, wish they would have a little more HDMI uh, I.O. on the board. Maybe with the expansion, we'd get that in the future. Uh, the other things we'll see here is for coax uh, digital, there's three on both models and four optical. They do give one uh, coax output, which is nice, uh, designed for a remote system uh, to that, uh, for that purpose. And there is an AES EBU input, which you don't see in lower end equipment like down in Maranza, et cetera. And you get 16 channels input through this single uh, AES EBU uh, connector, uh, XLR connector. Uh, for the outputs, they're all balanced XLR. Uh, so you get the uh, 16 channels for both of them. Uh, you're getting no analog inputs or outputs, uh, and likewise, no phonograph, phono input. There are triggers uh, in infrared. Uh, you know, there's, there's uh, two infrared ins, one trigger in, uh, one infrared out, and four trigger outs on both models. As far as the um, DAX, uh, we don't know what's in these. Uh, I've done some research uh, over the last years. It hasn't come up uh, my way to, to really know what this is. So that's unknown. Uh, Lingdorf, uh, surprisingly, doesn't give a lot of output specifications. You know, they don't tell you what the signal-to-noise ratio. That's not published. They do say that there is a total harmonic distortion of 0.005% on both models and that PCM decoding is uh, 24192. Uh, I don't see any specifications uh, for DSD. I can just assume they're not supporting DSD. If you know if they do, please let me know, but it's not published. Both models have Ethernet inputs for streaming uh, capabilities. Uh, but there's no wireless, whether that's Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, uh, no capabilities there. Um, it's not something we're passionate about, but I know some of you are. On the video, so we're getting back now to the HDMI, and as I said, we wish there was more 
uh, HDMI ports here. MP40 is 2.0B capable, and then the MP60 2.1, I guess that is what the 2.1 stands for, is HDMI. Um, and so that comes with that is the 2.3 um, copy protection HDCP versus the MP40, which is only 2.2. They both have eARC and uh, CEC control. Uh, the difference is when you go for the video, you're only going to get 60 hertz 4K uh, with the MP40, but the MP60 2.1, you get your 120 hertz for 4K and up to 60 hertz for the 8K capability. They're all uh, both HDR compatible. Uh, no um, HDR10 Plus for Samsung uh, capability. Uh, there is Dolby Vision. Um, there is a hybrid log gamma support. And what is neat is they actually get into some of the details of what they're supporting in the 2.1 spec. They're supporting the variable refresh rate VRR. They're supporting um, fast V active FVA and auto low latency mode ALLM. So it's nice that they give those details. I wish they were more specific in other areas on these products. For control, you know, both Ethernet control for, for integration, um, for, for automation. Um, so you have your infrared in outs, you have your DB9 serial connector, you have your triggers, as we mentioned before, when in, in, for, out. Uh, they specifically list control for be, driver being available. Uh, I suppose the other uh, popular brands may be uh, for integration um, may also be supported, but they don't explicitly list them, so we don't include it here either. For streaming ecosystems, they support AirPlay, they support Spotify Connect, uh, they are Rune ready uh, for, for this. Uh, we don't see uh, Chromecast uh, or AirPlay 2 specifically listed or Sonos. For internet streaming, you get Apple Music through the AirPlay. You For Spotify, you, you get that through Spotify Connect. And then there's the V tuner for your radio stations, virtual tuner. Uh, so that makes up for the lack of an onboard AM FM um, broadcast tuner. The remotes are the same. These are slim looking uh, remotes. I don't think they're backlit. Uh, Rarely do you get the clear indication from these uh, manuals that if, if they do have backlit or not. I don't think these are. Uh, the dimensions are similar on these. We do find that the MP60 is a little taller uh, and a little deeper than the other. So with being uh, 5.8 inches high versus 5.5 inches high and 14.6 inches deep versus 14.1 inches deep. And respectively, I've got the uh, metric in there in millimeters. Uh, for the weight, the MP60 is the heaviest, of course. It's 19 pounds, 9 kilograms. And the MP40 is 14.8 pounds, 6.7 kilograms. They don't publish the power consumption of these models. And finally, let's take a look at some of the, on the displays here. Uh, the on-screen displays are also available as a web page. They look similar on both models here, same uh, graphics, etc. You can see how you can adjust your, your curves here, equalization curves and everything. And so it's, it looks like a, a very decent um, interface. And they have an app for playback, um, not just on-screen and web, but they do have the Android and the iOS mobile app that you can do your playback. So that wraps it up for Lingdorf. You know, they have these two models. You know, what do you think? Are you at the caliber where you're willing to spend $10,000, $15,000 for a processor and then still have to get your amplifiers? Uh, is Lingdorf your choice? Or would you rather get, let's say, the Macintosh MX170, which is based off of the Lingdorf? Uh, that feedback would be useful to the RipeWave audio community. If you enjoyed this video, please 
like and subscribe to this Ripe Wave Audio community, and be sure to hit the uh, subs uh, the bell notification so you are notified the next time a video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.